Hello, and welcome back to Factorio Vanilla 1.0. In the last episode, we set up the walls, and I don't have radar coverage out there, of course, but we set up some walls and a few additional turrets, along with some dragon's teeth here on parts of the walls at either end, to attempt to kind of head off the biters a little bit, and maybe, just maybe, get them to uh, or control them a little bit better. These guys are getting pretty close to pollution. These guys are getting pretty close to pollution. So we're going to start having problems here pretty soon. And then after we did that, we came out here and started building a rail line because we need to get this oil here, this oil here, and perhaps even this oil here, somewhere closer to the base. I think I'm going to do it right in this clearing uh, area here where we where we can process it in a uh, oil refinery setup. Uh, there's also some oil down here too, but I think I want to wait a little bit longer on that one just because I want to kind of see how the bus goes before I decide if I'm going to pick that one up or not. Uh, looks like we might have had some expansion down here also. Interesting. Okay, so um, what I wanted to do first today was I wanted to look at building a, a T intersection. And we're only going to use part of the T in the end here. We're only going to use it as a curve. But I wanted to build the curve as part of the T, and then that way we would also have a T intersection when we need it later. Because we will probably need it later. So there's a couple of different ways to build this. Um, the, the sort of bigger you make the intersection, the easier it's going to be for the signals, signal placement, and for the trains to sort of navigate it amongst each other. Um, up to a certain point, then it becomes unwieldy, of course. But so what I want to do is is actually take this intersection from this point here, where the uh, where the power pole is, and actually take it right into there like that. And that's going to be the lane that goes north here to eastbound there. And then I want to do the same kind of thing uh, on this side. So I need to place this this one first. And then do the same kind of thing over here. At least this is how I like to build my intersections. To kind of plan them out a little bit. Um, you can kind of do this, do this however you want to. It just seems to work best for me to do it something like this. And then of course this one is just straight through. Uh, nothing, no surprises there. And then this one also would be straight through. No surprises there. And then this one is kind of, these two other uh, angles here are kind of the harder ones to do. So you can, you can start here like this, but I think you want to go in a little bit and maybe, maybe about there. And this is going to be something that I usually do kind of like a guess and check method on just because it's kind of a, um, not an exact science, at least to me it's not. So um, I kind of just build it and see how it looks. And then I think that looks symmetrical. So these blueprints here are actually garbage. Oops. We can take those out. Then we can fix what I just did. Sometimes you have to kind of break a few eggs to make an omelet, you know. So, oh, by the way, what I did was I took the, the blueprint that was here with the signals on it. And then I rotated it like just one time like this, and I put it down here, and then I cleared the stuff out that uh, to the north there that I didn't need. But that's that's kind of how I planned out this intersection, is, or this, yeah, this T-intersection, is to just have the basically one power pole length from the sort of center of the cross to the T down and then across to either side. That was kind of my idea here, at least. So let's put down everything we need in the T-intersection, and then what we're just going to do is remove the parts we don't need for the curve after. Because I want to actually have this to be uh, able to be blueprinted so that I don't have to rebuild it again another time. So next is signals. So we have, there's some there's some logic to use for signals and you can definitely overdo signals without, usually without causing problems. But there's some logic to do with signals that you want to follow. So um, whenever you are going into an intersection where it's a cross intersection, like this one, for example, you want to have a, a, a chain signal. That's the ones that have the blue option here. And and that's in all directions. So this one also comes into that there. And they're flashing right now because there's some invalid blocks here. As you can see, by the way, when I have the, cur the, the, um, the signal in my cursor, either signal, 
uh, it shows me this black interface where the whole thing is yellow. You don't want a whole intersection to be the same color because then only one train will be able to be in that intersection at any given time. So, uh, so those two should be okay. Uh, the other thing you want to do with a cross is end the intersection as soon as possible or end that chain as soon as possible after it with a regular signal. So we need to put a regular signal in either of those places. And now look, this intersection now has one tiny space where it's a different color. And the good part of this is, is this a train in this little blue space is only impeding trains going in and out of this little blue space. It's not affecting any trains anywhere else. And so we're going to continue to do this by breaking up as much of this uh, intersection as we can and uh, making it, making it, a much smaller intersection so this this stretch here I've seen people claim to, that they want to put the signal as close to the beginning as possible thereby making this beginning section shorter and I've seen other people claim that they want to put the intersection or the signal to the very end and thereby making this piece closer and if you think about it what the signal is telling you is where is my next train uh, or is 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 the block ahead of this signal? Does it have a train in it? So if you look at the blocks here, uh, this purple is a block, and this yellow, all of this yellow, is a block. We're gonna we're gonna break this apart a little bit in a little bit here. Actually, yeah. Um, so if you think about it, this signal is looking into this purple block and saying, okay, is there a train in this purple block? If there is, then I need to be red. If there's not, and actually I can actually simulate this by putting a train in the block. Let's put a train in the block. Now the signal is red. This this uh, this purple section, uh, this purple area has a um, has a train in it, so it it now makes this signal red. Now the reason some people put a signal here is because now this becomes a blue segment, and notice that's why I put the train here, a little little ahead of ahead of game here, a little bit, and now all of a sudden this train has left this block. So this this block is now free for another train to enter it and say that train wants to pull forward into this direction and there's no trains out here now that this train has passed this space this this signal a train coming behind it is now free to go this way no problem and but you got to remember too that there's a train here there's a locomotive here but there's also some cargo wagons usually behind it so you got to think that this is actually the last cargo wagon and so the other factor to take into account is signals that are very close together mean that a train's going to occupy more than one block. And that's why we spaced these ones up hard so much on the straightaways is so that the trains don't occupy more than one block. Occupying more than one block isn't a bad thing, but it also isn't a uh, isn't an, an ideal thing, especially for straightaways. That's why we made the straightaways have the signals further apart. So here, um, and so I've kind of tried both methods and I've never really built a train network that's very big. So I've never really had a problem with either the signal being here at the beginning or here at the end, or in the case of this, this uh, T intersection here, because it's so big, why not just put one of both? And so I'm going to. Uh, if, if someone out there in comment land would like to quibble with that, feel free. I like quibbling. Um, but for me, like, in an intersection, I would rather have smaller blocks that do that allow trains to kind of push through faster, especially when you have three possible directions going on here. And uh, speaking of three possible directions, I don't want to have crossing intersections. Signaling those is a colossal pain, and I'm not interested. So I stick with T's as much as possible and move on from there. So let's do um, a couple other uh, crisscross intersections here. So we have this one here. That's a crossing intersection. So we need to signal that the same as we did this one. So there's a signal here. And then there's also a signal that goes here because you're coming into the, the, the crisscross intersection. And then you need a signal coming out of it for both directions. And then that makes that intersection happy. And we have a nice tiny little blue, coincidentally blue. I don't think it's, it's not because it's a crossing intersection. It's just the way the coloring works. Uh, you have a nice tiny little crisscross intersection here. So as soon as the train leaves that cross, someone can go across it. And that's the idea. And then we need to have, ah, 
You need to be careful sometimes. You'll see here there, this, this green square where you can put a signal is linked to both tracks. If you have that and the signal you want to place is not indicating which is indicating the incorrect track that it's on now this one is showing the train car spacing on this track but i want this um chain signal on this track you just press r to rotate and then that puts that signal on the track you want it on but as soon as you move around it's going to guess again so you need to rotate and then place it right away and then we also have this one is coming in here and then finally we need to have output here and output here now I could also, because this one was kind of shared in a shared place, I could have backed this one up this way, and then I could have this space for this one. Eh, that might look better, but it's kind of six of one half dozen the other. It's up to you which way you want to work it. The point is to get at a crossing intersection to get the signals as close as possible to the cross so that as little of the train is, or as little of the cross can be covered by the train, and the train can leave that cross as soon as possible. Now, there's a qualifier here. When you have two intersections that are very close together, like these two are less than one full train length, you actually do not want to exit the cross with a rail signal. And the reason for that is because if the train pulls up here and it says, oh, I can, I can, if it's driving along this way and this signal right here is green, it's going to pull up here. And, and then this signal is red due to a, a train across it, it's going to stop right there. Well, you might not think that's a problem, except what if it has a few cars behind it? Now all of a sudden, it has blocked this lane and this lane, and it's in itself. So now you could have what's called a gridlock, where the trains can't clear themselves from this intersection without human intervention. And you don't want to go out and intervene every time a train gets messed up. So if you put a, uh, a rail si or chain signal here, now this chain signal, if there's a train here, uh, no, I'm sorry, not there. If there's a train here coming across this way, the chain signal keeps the red all the way back to here and says you can't come into this block at all. You can pull forward and you can stop here, which does indeed block the trains going straight, but if it didn't pull forward, if it stopped back here at another chain signal, then it would still be blocking this way, so it doesn't matter. As long as it's not blocking more than the rail that it needs to occupy, then you're fine. So you want to make sure that you don't have a rail signal in between two chain signals like that uh, when there's not enough for one full train length in the maximum length of the trains you're going to have on this rail network between that chain that rail signal and the next chain signal so we're going to put that back same thing happens here for the same exact reason this train this this is only two car lengths so we need to have it there and then finally it happens also right here and that is also for the same thing because there's only enough room for about a car and a half here or, or a yeah a segment and a half really so um, you want to make sure you have that. And this one is okay because this one is saying, well, this one is, is sort of okay. Let's talk about these type of intersections here. Um, this one is saying that you can pull forward and then you get a red signal here because if there's a train in this block, in, in the block here that's signified by yellow. Okay, so... If the train pulls forward to this spot here on this rail, it's going to block its crisscross here. It's going to block this one here most likely, and it's also probably still blocking this cross here. But the reason it stopped here is because there's literally a train in this block already coming south here. So this signal here doesn't actually do anything for you by making it a rail signal other than instead of the train stopping here, the train instead stops way back here, which means, of course, that a train coming north could go here, or, well, it could go here anyway, but could come up north and go west, and a train, let's see, a train coming eastbound behind the train that's blocking this could keep going. Yes, that's true, but it doesn't, it, you're talking about a short block where this, where a train is in this, in this tiny block here or reserving it because of the yellow light, but the yellow lights make things a little more complicated to explain. Um, so you, you, you have a, um, a situation where you might not 
you could do a chain signal here. I, I'm t not telling you not to put a chain signal here. I'm saying that I don't think that it's absolutely necessary for train throughput because your train is just going to end up stopping back here instead of up here, which means that it's then going to have to still have to come through the intersection and it's still going to block what it's going to block when it's going to block it. And for the time that it's going to be blocked from this corner, for this little block here, I don't think it's worth um, putting a chain signal in here and making the train stop way back here. Because also, by the way, as the train is coming this way, if it were to have to stop here to wait for this train to clear, then it's got to start back up again. Well, if this train clears pretty fast, which it's going to, to clear, then the train coming this way may never have to even stop. So there's another thought to put into that uh, to put into that problem. So it's up to you. You can put a chain signal here. If you do, then you'll want a chain signal here also, and you'll want a chain signal here also. But I'm I'm not going to do those. But I, what I am going to do is put rail signals in, like we did here on these segments. I'm going to put rail signals in here and here to make this uh, top stretch a separate block. And the reason I'm doing that is because if a train from here continues along this way, once it clears that signal, then a train coming around behind it can do this maneuver. And also, then if if, the, if this is one big solid block, then if the train comes even into this part, a train can't come up this way. So for me, I want these, block, these blocked out as well. And so this is a pretty good T intersection with uh, fairly small sized blocks, which is what you want in an intersection, and uh, well signaled crosses, which is the important part of, a, um, of, of signaling an intersection. And then, of course, the tightness, meaning that we need extra chain signals instead of rail signals. So I'm going to do is blueprint this. That way we have it for future uh, future play. Let's copy that and drop it in there. And I could do this. Maybe this should be uh, uh, with a letter S for a straight track. Save. And then this one should be with a letter T for a T intersection. Um, and then you can put these in your blueprint library, which you see I have a lot of blueprints, which I'm not using on purpose. Uh, the only one I'm using is, the, is Catherine Sky's uh, new mall. Um, but I, I do like to keep certain blueprints, especially trains, handy for the purposes of a particular map. So now that we have this T intersection built, there's no way I'm ever going to, I shouldn't say ever, but there's probably no way I'm ever going to use this part of the T. So what I want to do is I want to rip up that part of the T. Now that we've built it all and designed it all, I want to rip it up. And of course I don't have a bot, so I, or any bots, so I can't do this uh, faster for you, unfortunately. I mean, I guess I could pause the recording and come back to it. Um, I do need to keep that power pole there, though. Oh, and you can do some fancy, or not fancy, but different stuff with the power poles if you want, like... Well, this one, maybe I'll do like a four-corner kind of thing because it's it's the uh, center of the T. Uh, maybe I should have done that before I blueprinted. Or, yeah, before I blueprinted. That's up to you how you want to do your fancy lighting. Uh, this can go all the way back here. And we don't need any of these signals then as well. Oops. We don't need this signal. We don't need this one or this one. This rail goes away. And the signals that are on it, of course, go away. And, and you're going to always pick up some rails you didn't want to pick up. You don't need that signal, and you don't need these signals. Now, you might want one because of the length here, but it's actually not any longer than, than this stretch here. So I think I'm going to um, leave it. But I do want to put in somewhere here in the center um, a, a power pole instead of having this one out here. Oh, my inventory is full. Really? Okay. Um, yeah. Well, I will place some stuff down, like some lamps, and then I'll have not a non-full inventory. I think that's centered pretty well. Maybe. Uh, one way we can find out. First of all, let's put some lights in here. Maybe I'll do like that, a diagonal. That could be fun. One way to find out if you're centered or not is to take a blueprint like this. And hold down shift when you place it so you see the color of the square goes blue. That means you want a blueprint. 
and you can look at it a little bit there but you can also set it here and rotate it once and if you kind of eyeball this you can see that the lights or we can actually I can actually walk it you can see that the power pole is still centered there so so that means that this actually was a centered power pole and then you can't really tell with that one but you could do the same with up here by walking in the other direction like that so this actually is a good and of course I don't have it there we go uh, this player inventory is full oh right that's where my blueprints go all right that's that's why my, in my inventory is full my my inventory is full and so I don't have any place to put down my blueprint okay I'm gonna have to carry something um, but this one I'm gonna put a letter oops oh, I can't okay I will do it later so let's go back now no let's go ahead and set up a base here for the uh, a station here rather for the collection of this oil that is out here one of the things that I like to use my T intersections for is entrances and exits into um, uh, what are they called um, stations yeah stations there we go uh, so let's grab that T intersection again if I can I don't know if it's gonna let me do I have something that I can put in oh I know what I can do let's grab train cars instead and put down a train car yeah um, maybe okay I will put down a lot of train cars so I can have my inventory back thank you game uh, let's drop a couple of things into this car and I'm putting them into the first car on purpose here oh I had coal I could have thrown that in the train um, that's fine for now I'll pick up these cars again because I really only want one because it's just for extra stuff so let's, let's edit this, put that C on there for corner. Uh, and then I'm going to use that T intersection we just built. So I guess I could have built it down here. But I'm going to use it here and place that down to blueprint my plan so that I can follow it and uh, place it. And the reason I like to use T intersections for my station entrances and exits when I can is then I don't have to have separate blueprints for a station exit or entrance and it kind of serves it kind of makes makes you think of the station as a um as just like another branch of the network or the rail network so if you think of if you think of it as that at least to me then it uh makes things makes things clearer for me And I'm just following the blueprint now because that's all we need to do. <laughs> as long as you have well-designed blueprints, which you can argue whether this blueprint is well-designed or not, but as long as you have well-designed blueprints, then you should be able to um, just follow it and not have to think about it. We'll do the crisscross or the corner one there. I think the the uh, diagonal is kind of fun there. Okay, so I guess I could re-blueprint this as my teener section blueprint. Since I fixed the lights... Oh, I missed a signal. See, if I had bots, I wouldn't have missed this signal down here. Well, I shouldn't say that, because who knows. I've been known to do things that are a little bit crazy. Actually, I should try out the new feature. Uh, wasn't there a clear... Hmm. Wasn't there a reset blueprint option that's new in 1.0? Oh, it's like new contents for the blueprint. There we go. I knew there was an option someplace. Uh, still new to 1.0, just like everyone else. But then, uh, now I've made this blueprint. I wish you could rotate it now, though. That's the only problem. Well, actually, that's maybe better because it fits better. I also need to exclude the trains and the train fuel from this blueprint, which I don't know if I did that before or not. If I had train a train in the other one. I didn't. I don't know if that one had one or not. But now it doesn't, so we're good. So then we want to come into a station here. Um, Given the size of these oil fields, and let's assume that I want to operate them out of the same station, uh, I don't think I need much in the way of parking. Um, but parking is another interesting 
uh, thing to build, and I think that might end up being the other half of this episode. But you can build parking on a diagonal. Oh, and by the way, the reason you need parking is if you have a station, as we have, or are going to have, where you need to have more than one train coming in, especially when it's more than one train, more than one type of item worth collecting. And I'm thinking ahead here and thinking, well, there's some stone down here that's not too far away for this station. And until we get bots going, I don't, I, I have too many cliffs here to deal with. Which, by the way, you can see that I dealt with some cliffs in some creative manners after the episode, last episode. But uh, if you you need parallel parking, there's a couple different ways to do this. Uh, you can go on a diagonal like this, or the other directional diagonal, and you need to make sure that these are far enough apart that you can put signals in here. And these need to be uh, rail signals, but then you need to have a chain signal before the rail signals because you want the train that's coming into this station into this parking lot to decide do i want to go to this station this parking spot or this parking spot or any other parking spots you have here assuming that we have more than one and then at the head end we need to make sure that this is long enough so we need a little bit more at the head end of the station or the parking lot you need to have a chain signal and that chain signal needs to be far enough away to accommodate the largest train you have. In this case, we're going to have one four trains, which is one locomotive and four cargo wagons. So that's five segments. You can count them out. Unfortunately, I can't point at the screen without moving my cursor. But you can see there are five white blocks. And those represent the five uh, entities as, that are part of the full train. So this is as close to... Actually, this is as close to... That's weird. This here is as close to that other signal as we can get without losing one of those entities. So we need to put the chain signal here, which means I can pick up that last rail, and we can add one more rail here and make sure that that one is also long enough. One, two, three, four, and wait a minute. No, it's not. Oh, wait. Duh. It's, yeah, it's got to go out there some. There. So that's enough room for parking and then when you get done with parking then you can come out like this and out like this and merge them back together again and then this can go into whatever you want to deem as your station now i need to be careful because i want to probably have a little bit more parking here but i also want to make sure that i go into a station wisely and i may even come back out and lay and fill a little bit of this and make this a little bit better that might be best Especially if I want to have more than one station here. I think having one station for crude, even if we include this crude, is fine. But if I want to have another station where I can pick up the stone from here, although that's pretty far, so maybe I won't. Maybe we'll just do a single station here. Yeah, let's just do a single. So we'll come out this way, and you want to make sure, of course, that your station is long enough to accommodate the, the shortest train you have. And you also want to make sure that your station has... Um, has a signal at the uh, end of it, the end of the curve. So that would be right here. Because you can't stop a train on a curve and try and load it with anything. And then of course we need a signal here on the head end, and we need to go a little bit further because we're going out for uh, one, one, five, one four train. So we need five segments still. One, two, three, four, five is right there. That's the minimum size of the station. Um, but that's actually not the entity that I need to place. I need to place a train stop here. And it's the same thing, except for train stops can only be placed every other signal space because of the size of the train stop. So you can see these boxes are bigger and further apart. So we just need to identify where 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, right there is the closest it can be. And you can put a signal here as well to break up that block. And the advantage to the signal here is once the train clears this signal, Without the signal there, this is one giant block. But once the train clears the signal, so the last wagon passes, another train can pull into the station. Until the station is clear, and the, the block, the whole block the train station is in is clear, because the stop does not count as a separate as a block marker, uh, then the next train cannot pull in. So we want to make sure that we accommodate this like this. So you need this one piece out here, I think... 
Ugh, rock. And I'll clear a couple of these trees, too, just to be safe. Or can you? You can curve right away. Okay. You can curve right away after the block that the station is... The, the, the rail segment the station is attached to. Because this signal can be placed on the curved space, or the curved track, and not cause problems. And then we need to curve back in like this a bit. And we need to head toward that exit point right... No. Right there. Now... This is also a very long block. As you can see, we have more than enough room for a five length train. One, two, three, four, five. So we need to put a signal in right about here. Uh, maybe one more. And you can identify, okay, there's five. There's space for five now. And then for here, back to the station, there's space for, there actually is space for five. Conveniently. If there's not, I would put the signal closer to the station than closer to the exit. The reason being that the train is going to be accelerating coming out of the station. So it's going to spend more time in this block than it spends in this block, assuming it can clear the whole path and you're fine. And so you want this block to be shorter because it's going slower speeds because it's still accelerating. So that's my argument for making this block the shorter block if one of them needs to be shorter. Um, or you can kind of split the difference, or third the difference if, it, if it's too long for three. But that's my kind of basic station here. Uh, the next thing that I would do next, or yeah, the next thing I would do next is put down power poles between each car marker. That signifies where those cars are, and I put one at the end as well. I usually don't put one at the head end because you can't. Um, well, so I guess I don't because you can't. And then we'll want to bring in the power uh, via the large power poles here there and here and I'm probably just gonna go right to where I can barely reach it and that way you can set up whatever you need to set up here at your train station and I will hit a quick thing on a fluid train station and then that'll be the end of the episode um, the fluid the fluid pumps in order to load a fluid into a fluid wagon let's uh, grab a train by the way I guess I should have kept that coal now that I place it. And let's do fluid wagons. I think I'm only going to do two here. But this allows me to accommodate four. I'm only doing two, but I can accommodate a four length, a four car train at some point. And so I like to standardize my maps and then not have to worry about it. So in order to load in a fluid, because the fluids are in pipes, pipes, which I don't know that I picked up pipes. I did not, so we're gonna have to, I'm gonna have to go back to get this anyway. But we're gonna use the pump jacks, which um, which are here, and they output to a pipe. You can see the little pipe uh, output icon there, the little blue icon, and then you hook pipes up to that. You chain them all together, and you pipe them down here to the station, and then you want you need to load it. Well, you're gonna you're gonna put down some tanks here at the station to store the fluid in whatever that fluid is. In this case, it's of course. Um, uh, it's of course crude oil, and you might want to link the tr the station or the, the 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 things together like this. Um, some people don't do that. Instead, they put it out here and do an underground in between, underground pipe. Do I have enough? Barely, iron to make an underground pipe. Um, but what you need to load a train car is you need a pump, and the pump you can see has um, has an arrow on it telling you which direction of flow. We need it to flow into the car because this is a pickup station or yeah, loading station. So we want it to flow in versus flowing out. And you can also see that the pump takes on a little bit different sprite when it's pointed against a train versus when it's not. And that's because of the way that the pump connects to the train. And you can see the yellow box saying that, hey, there's a train here. Uh, there are six points where you can connect a pump to a train. But there are only three connections on the train itself, each one signified by the yellow box. So what I like to do with my trains is if I set up the two tanks like this, uh, and they happen to output, you can see the outputs here on the tank, going this way and one coming this way, and then the ones up here that are joined together, and the ones up here that have pipes next to them. Um, what I like to do is, is set up my, my, my tanks, which are three by three, and this is six, next to each other like this so that you can connect it like that and then it connects to that particular nozzle on the train and then you, I do that one there to connect to that particular nozzle. You can't get three tanks together on one side without um, doing some fanciness. 
and I don't bother because the reason I don't bother is because a connection from a tank to a tank is much faster and, and also a tank to a pump and a pump to a wagon all three of those are much faster transfer speed uh, does it say somewhere yeah it says on the pump there 12,000 that's the transfer speed for a pump but it's also the transfer speed tank to tank tank to pump pump to uh, car wagon but the transfer speed from a tank to a pipe is more like 1200 or a pipe to a pipe or a pump to a pipe so you're much better off having the pipes bringing in to the buffer space here in the tanks uh, at the 1200 ish speed and then having the pump feed the train super fast because the train can hold 25,000 the pump can pump at 12,000 so that means that it takes just over two seconds per for one pump to fill one wagon two pumps means it's just over one second to fill one wagon you can also do a third pump people some people do this they put it on the other side and they put a tank over here I've got a power pole noise so I can't do it but they put it on the other side and they um, to connect that third one and they have a little bit more buffer this way because they have a tank on this side as well but I never found that very advantageous simply because we're already down to about one second loading time do we really need to go faster so um, those are things to think about for the T intersection and I guess also the curve for that matter the parking lot which I only have two spaces here you can have as many as you feel you need and you can take a blueprint to this by the way and uh, and and drop more down we could probably fit four in here no we can only fit three in here because of how tight this station is due to this little lake here but if I need more than one train if if with the size of the oil that I have available here I'm never gonna need more than one train loading and two trains waiting and I'm probably gonna need more like one train total or maybe two trains total um, so I'm I'm perfectly happy with just having two parking spots here but by all means for your stations as you're building them add as many parking spaces as you think you need and uh, and then of course a fluid station and we'll uh, look at a solid loading and unloading station and a fluid unloading station in a future episode so thank you all for joining me for this this is kind of a compound tutorial with the T intersection the parking lot and the um, and the station but I hope you found it useful and um, and I hope you'll come back for the next episode so thank you all for joining me this time and I will see you next time bye for now <laughs>